Yeah, thank you. What a, what a great night. Uh, an honor to be here. Um, congratulations to the other winners and the, and the coaches, national champion coaches. I will tell you, I, I much like Matt, called a few people about this event and was told what a tremendous evening it is. And it, and it has not disappointed, although it's a little humbling. For the first time in the history of Wheaton basketball, we made the NCAA Division III Final Four. And we had the worst season in the room. It's a little bit, I mean, it's a little bit daunting to go, ah, Final Four. Uh, but anyway, great honor to be here. Um, certainly thanks to John, small college basketball. What can I tell you about Aston Francis? I get asked all the time what it's like to coach a guy like Aston. And, and truthfully, it's not that difficult. I just stood there and did what everybody else did. I just sort of clapped, went, great job, Aston. I didn't have to do a whole lot. We just uh, gave him the ball and put other four guys on the other side of the floor. Tremendous player, tremendous player. Here's what I want you to know about Aston, two things. One, he's the hardest working player I have ever coached. And if I divided him in half, he'd be the two hardest working players I've ever coached. It's not co close. Um, his work ethic is stuff of legend at Wheaton College. Everybody's got an Aston Francis story about his work ethic. Um, the one that everybody's heard, obviously, is after uh, the Augustana game where he missed a three. We were uh, down two, missed a three, I don't know, 10 seconds left, something like that. After that game, he went into the back gym and spent, um, made that shot, practiced that shot again until he made it 100 times so that the next time he had it, he would make it. Well, it happened to come up again in the Elite Eight game against Marietta. He actually made two threes. Um, and if you've seen them, and you will here in a minute, they were step back, fall away threes into our bench. Um, again, tremendous coaching. We ran a great play. Uh, but it came at that moment that he, that he got the opportunity to shoot, make that and made both of them, both times we were down to put us up and eventually win that game. He had 62 in that, uh, in that effort to put us into the final four. But that is hours and hours and hours of work. People have heard that story. I've got one, I don't even know that Aston knows that I know this story, but I've got a good friend in coaching, Mike McGrath, who's the head coach at University of Chicago. And at the final four, he stayed in the same hotel we were in and we get beat uh, by Oshkosh on Friday night and it was the late game. Um, and so we got back really late to the hotel Friday night, maybe 11.30, midnight, something like that. And Mike McGrath said he got up the next morning, Saturday morning, to do a workout in the workout in the fitness room uh, at the hotel we were in Saturday morning about eight o'clock. And he walks into the fitness room and there's Aston Francis in there lifting. His career's over in terms of college player, but Aston was already starting to work uh, towards the next goal, which is to continue to play. Um, I can tell you, we've, I've had days that he had to tape up his hands because he had blisters that were bleeding. He's the hardest working player I've ever coached. And so to have an honor like this, um, to be uh, mentioned along with Bevo Francis, it, it's something he's earned and worked for, and I'm proud of him. But here's the thing I want you to know. The other thing I want you to know about Aston is his best moment in a Wheaton College uniform isn't winning the Bevo Francis Award, as prestigious as that is. It isn't being the D3Hoops.com Player of the Year, as prestigious as that is. It isn't getting us to a Final Four. It isn't scoring 62 points, as amazing as that is. His best moment, and he's heard me tell him this story before, we had the unfortunate experience against North Central this year to have a young man for their team suffer a catastrophic injury about 10 feet from our bench. He went up to actually block a shot against Aston and landed awkwardly and compound fractured his ankle, tore his ACL, ended up on the floor in a tremendous amount of pain. And uh, long story short, for whatever reason, it took the ambulance a while to get to us. So this young man, Aiden Chang, um, tremendous player, tremendous young man, was on our court uh, clearly suffering and in pain, and the entire gym has gone silent. Never experienced about a minute left to go in a game. Entire gym's gone silent, um, with the exception of some of Aiden's uh, angst, for lack of a better way to say it. And, and minutes go by, minutes go by, and it's just becoming uncomfortable. What do we do? And Aston looked at our team uh, and said, guys, we need to go down and pray with them. So here goes the Wheaton basketball team down to the other bench, to take a knee with North Central to pray for Aiden Chang. That's the best thing Aston Francis has ever done in a Wheaton basketball uniform, and it's the moment I'm most proud of him for. Uh, congratulations, Zay, I love you.
Well, I'm confident I'm not going to be able to top that, but I do want to tell you uh, a bit about the numbers and about a lot of the research that we did about Aston before we play his highlights and, and bring him up. But for the first time since we've been presenting the Bevo Francis Award, again, this is the fourth time, I want to start my little spiel, if you will, about Aston with an apology. Um, but that's an apology to my wife, Christine, uh, because I really have tried to be a better husband. I've tried to be more present when I'm home. But honestly, when Aston Francis is playing, it was really difficult this year. I didn't do a very good job, and, uh, and, and knowing that Aston graduates tomorrow from Wheaton, I really think that you're going to help my relationship with my wife at this point, being able to be a little more present, spend more time, uh, because she decided that she wanted to have some friends over to the house, and, uh, and I said, that's, that's great, you know, it's some of your friends, have it, we'll have a great time. But what she didn't realize is she scheduled that time at exactly the same time as the Division Three Final Four, and approximately the same time as the second game tipped off with Oshkosh against Wheaton. And um, I wasn't a very good husband or host that night uh, when eventually she got me to come down in the second half after staying upstairs watching the first half on the computer. Um, but I did come down with my computer and uh, invite others to watch the second half of the game uh, with me. So um, I made a new friend that night, um, wanted to know if I was watching KU or Duke. And I said, no, I'm watching Wheaton, I'm watching Aston Francis. And I had to explain the story. So. Um, Aston, I am going to blame you for a relationship uh, challenge right now, but uh, hopefully it'll get better here shortly after graduation. So let me um, talk a moment about Aston and some of the accomplishments this year since we focus on the season award. And these numbers are staggering if you think about it. Um, this year alone, Aston averaged 34.2 points per game and broke the Division III record for points in a single season. In the history of Division III basketball, nobody had ever scored 1,000 points in a season. Aston scored 1,096 points this season alone. Of all levels of college basketball at the NCAA level, most know that Division III plays the least amount of games, and yet he is now uh, 14th highest single season total in NCAA history between Division I, II, and three. He hit, think about this for a moment, 173 three-pointers this season. It's the highest by far in Division III history. It is the second highest of all levels in the history of NCAA basketball. He also led the team in rebounding with 7.9. He averaged 3.1 assists per game. And think about this for a moment. He scored 40 or more points 10 times. You know, the guy scored 40 points in a game. That's kind of a big deal. He did it 10 times uh, this season. He's the only player to average double digits on his team. And so, as you can imagine, one of the challenges for Coach Shower and the team is the amount of junk defenses that were thrown from boxing ones to triangle and two and put both of them on him uh, to face guarding from the time he walks out of timeouts, uh, faced about every kind of junk defense you can think of. But I got to tell you, uh, from a basketball junkie standpoint and a guy who coached for a while, what a joy to watch. What a thrill it was to watch over and over and throughout the season. Let me just give you a few of the quick, uh, quick highlights. Um, against Illinois Wesleyan, who was a big rival in Illinois, first time they played him, uh, Aston hits the buzzer beater you saw in the, the film earlier uh, to win the game, buzzer beating three to win the game. And then the next time that they played Illinois Wesleyan, uh, they held him to 45 points and nine rebounds in another win to sweep uh, the series against a really good rival where he went 15 for 15 from the free throw line as well. And uh, by the way, that came the game after he dropped 49 on North Park. Um, you, you get the point there against Wisconsin Oshkosh, who was incredibly good, obviously won the national championship this year. Uh, the first game against them, uh, he had 45 points, 10 rebounds, five assists in that game against Wisconsin Platteville. He set the score, uh, school record for scoring with 54 points in a game. Uh, incredible. But then the NCAA tournament happened. I don't need any notes for this. I watched this. This was the single best. I've watched a lot of basketball, as you may have guessed. In terms of an individual postseason performance, it's the best that I've personally ever witnessed. In the first game of the NCAA tournament against Hanover, he went for 42 points and 13 rebounds. The next game at Worcester, who's a very well-coached, very good team, Aston just completely took over in the second half. The last 10 minutes of the game, uh, it was, frankly, it was just a, a complete joy to watch. He finished that one with 43 
against Worcester and beating Worcester at Worcester. Just a tremendous victory. Then they went to Augustana, who's v number three in the country. They were really, really good. And, uh, and, and his team played really well. The whole team played really well that, that game. And Aston dropped 33 in that game to lead them to the Elite Eight, which led up to a game that uh, anybody that witnessed will remember that game against Marietta for probably the rest of their lives. Against Marietta in the Elite Eight, picture that going to the Final Four, top 20 team. Aston and dropped 12 three-pointers, had an NCAA Division III record, 62 points, hit two threes in the last 45 seconds, including a fadeaway with 45 seconds to go, and then the shot that Coach Schauer talked about that he had hit 100 times in practice in the middle of the night so that he wouldn't miss it again with seconds left in the game to win it and send them to the Final Four. And then Oshkosh uh, honestly did a really nice job on him. He only had 44 in the uh, national semifinal game. To average, he broke five NCAA Division three scoring records in the NCAA tournament this year, including most points, points per game, most three-pointers made, and, and on and on. Just an incredible um, season that he had. Looking uh, at his entire career, he played three years at Wheaton. And think about this, in th only three seasons at Wheaton, he scored 2,396 points. He also ranked second in school history with 783 field goals, fifth in school history with 443 uh, made free throws, 11th in school history in, in assists. His 388 career three-pointers smashed the school record, of course, and ranked seventh in Division III history, and again, in only three seasons. At the uh, conclusion of the season, Aston was named the National Player of the Year, of course, by D3 Hoops, by D3 News, and then won the prestigious Jostens Award. Um, a quote from the president, and here's something, as I mentioned, we talked about character. We looked at a whole bunch uh, of different criteria to try to choose the winner of this. Here's what the Wheaton College president, Philip Riken, said. He said, in addition to his athletic accomplishments, Mr. Francis has a long record of working with disaster recovery in Texas, New Orleans, and Arkansas. Both on and off the court, Aston Francis is a strong and consistent student athlete with outstanding potential for future leadership. He also spent time coaching underprivileged youth, helping local senior citizens with home repairs and maintenance. He helped participate in multiple mission trips where he rebuilt homes, created a park, built a basketball court. In the, cl in the classroom, he's a 3.2 grade point average, about to graduate from one of the top liberal arts schools in the country. In 2017-18, he was named the NABC Honors Court. He was a Jostens finalist that year as well. I'll finish with these couple thoughts before we show the, uh, his highlights. But I've written this previously, and I'll say it again tonight. Aston Francis is the best pure scorer that I've per personally ever witnessed in Division III basketball. Aston, what you did on the basketball court won you the National Player of the Year awards. What you did on the court plus what you did in the community and beyond is what you won you the prestigious Jostens Award. What you did on the court, plus what you did in the community and beyond, collectively, what you did with your team, helping lead them to the final four this year, finishing with 23 wins, what you did in the classroom, the community, beyond, and who you've become as a person, as a human being, well, that's what just won you the most prestigious award in all of college basketball at the small college level. Congratulations on winning the Bevo Francis Award in 2019. Uh, thank you. Uh, first off, I uh, have to thank God, um, obviously, for the many blessings he's given me, um, especially this year and at, at my time at, uh, at Wheaton College. Um, I want to thank Mr. McCarthy uh, for his contributions to small college basketball and just for organizing the awesome events of this weekend and getting to meet so many amazing people um, and congratulations to all of you. Uh, pretty remarkable year for, for everyone here, I think. Um, I also want to thank the members of the Bevo Francis Award Committee for selecting me um, out of a pool of many deserving uh, nominees. And I also want to apologize to the committee. Um, I know my highlights probably weren't quite as impressive as Emmanuel Terry dunking on everybody last year, um, but Coach Shower wouldn't let me dunk. He just made me shoot threes all the time. Um, I feel incredibly honored uh, to be named the recipient of the Bevo Francis Award. Um, cousin Bevo was obviously an amazing player and scorer, uh, averaging 50 points in a season uh, and 116. Uh, dropping 116 is, is pretty remarkable. 
Um, but the aspect of his story that I think is often overlooked uh, that is probably the most impressive was his uh, contributions to the school as a whole and the community. Um, for him to save the school from having to close its doors um, and having just that big of an impact on that school is really impressive to me and I think that should probably be the goal of every student athlete is to not only impact uh, the team that you're playing on but just the community that you're living in for the four years or three years uh, that you're at that school. Um, yeah, he not only turned the basketball program around, he saved the school from closing its doors um, and to be honored with this award is something that I'm truly grateful for. Um, I remember when I was a junior in high school and was really beginning to come into my own as a player, um, I began setting goals for myself uh, to win certain awards, you know, district MVP, all tournament teams, uh, I set goals to win those awards. Um, and during this time, my dad told me that individual awards stem from team success. And that's something that really stuck with me um, because you may see guys win MVP awards or other awards like that. Uh, and it wouldn't happen if they weren't playing on really good teams with really good players. Um, and I've been very fortunate throughout my career at Wheaton to have uh, some successful teams and play with some really fantastic teammates. Um, these guys aren't only great players, they are selfless men of God. Um, and I am so lucky to be able to call them my brothers and have been able to play with them. Uh, there's no way that I'd be standing here tonight uh, if it weren't for their hard work and dedication to the Wheaton basketball program. Um, I also have to thank Coach Shower uh, for getting me to Wheaton um, and for always believing me in, enough to not yank me every time I uh, miss one of those crazy shots. It's nice when they go in, but there were plenty of misses that Coach probably wasn't too happy about. Um, I also want to thank JP, Joel, and uh, Zach Quam, who were our assistant coaches this year. Um, they were great mentors and friends to me and uh, people that I could always come talk to and bring problems to when Coach Shower got on me. Um, I also want to thank Coach uh, Mike Marquis and Coach Mitch Marquis at TJC uh, for giving me an opportunity to play. Uh, I had actually enrolled at Texas A&M and uh, was going to play basketball. I went to my new student conference and I uh, was a little scared that I had made the wrong decision. So they gave me the opportunity to come play at TJC for a year um, and really helped me rediscover my love for the game of basketball. Um, so I'm very grateful to them. Um, also our trainers, Alan and Trish, um, a lot of people don't know this, but I struggled with some injuries uh, all throughout the year. Um, and Alan and Trish were really dedicated and, and worked with me a lot to help me keep pushing through and to make it through the end of the season. Uh, so I'm very grateful for them for doing that. Um, lastly, I want to thank my, my family, uh, my brother Logan, for being someone that I want to set an example for. Um, I'm really excited to see where your college journey takes you. Uh, I think this is a really exciting time uh, for you. Um, I also want to thank my mom for her constant love and support. She was the only girl in the house growing up, which I'm sure was really tough. Um, so she was the peacemaker. Uh, and the one that had to comfort whoever lost the wiffle ball game or basketball or whatever it was in the backyard. Uh, there were a lot of tears coming from my dad hitting that elbow jump shot on me every weekend. So uh, thank, thanks to her. Um, and I'm also so thankful for her patience and her ability to always highlight the good things that I did, uh, even if I might have played terribly. She reminds me of the, the few shots that I might have hit in a bad game. Um, and then I also want to thank my dad for his constant motivation and encouragement. Uh, my dad was my coach in high school, and early on in, in my high school career, there were a lot of times that we butted heads. Um, I always thought that he was too hard on me and, and was really frustrated by that. Um, but as I've gotten older, I realized that uh, he always just wanted the best for me uh, and wanted to push me to be the best that I could be um, and didn't want to see me neglect uh, any of the gifts that God had given me. So um, our relationship has grown a lot through my time at Wheaton. Um, and so I want to thank you, Dad, uh, for pushing me and challenging me to go to Wheaton when I, I didn't really want to. Um, I, I know that going to Wheaton changed me for the better. Uh, I also want to thank my Uncle Joe and my Grandpa Papa Joe, who couldn't be here. Uh, I guess I should probably thank Papa Joe's dog, Jojo, as well. He's got a service dog that is like his child. It's, it's pretty weird to be honest with you, but I better thank Jojo or I'll get griped at later. Um, 
uh, thank them for their support and for always giving their honest and sometimes brutally honest feedback uh, after games. I think my favorite text I've ever gotten after a game was uh, Papa Joe texted me after a road game. I was on the bus and he said, uh, son, that was so awful to watch. I don't even know what to say to you. And pretty much told me, like, have fun trying to get over that one. So uh, <laughs> thanks to him for always keeping it real. <laughs> Um, God has truly blessed me in the past three years, um, especially through the game of basketball. I've met some of my best friends through the game um, and have experienced some of the most memorable, memorable moments of my life uh, so far through the game of basketball. I am so humbled to receive the Bevo Francis Award. Uh, it is a physical representation of countless hours in the gym and in the weight room uh, coming to fruition. And it is something that I am happy to say I can share with the many people who had a part in getting me here. Uh, thank you very much.